guys welcome back again to yet another very interesting episode wherever you're watching us from you are highly welcome in today's episode is all about pastor jerry Eze of nsppd Ghanaians and nsppd conference in ghana and the whole nsppdians so guys before we jump into the matter i would like you guys to get some peanuts as you can see i'm having one here and some drink sit back while you listen to the gist you eat and wire your mouth yes you heard me right so before we jump into the matter i would like to ask you some few questions what do you know about nsppd what do you know about pastor jerry essay what is the meaning of nsppd if you know the meaning please tell us in the comment section i know quite all right that pastor jerry essay every friday at the end of nsppd he always tries to introduce himself for, to newcomers like you or like me but i tell you guys all he says during NSPP is just a tips in an iceberg. This video unveils mysteries about Pastor Jerry Eze that you did not even know about. You cannot afford to miss this video, guys. Make sure you watch the video till the end. The XX, a true life story of Pastor Javi Eze. Day years ago, I remember the reason one of the things that the Lord used to kickstart a prayer life in me. Brought to you by Spirit Lens Media. Years ago, I was in a church, and uh, while I was growing up in Christ, and then I was in this, um, then, then they used to call it prayer warriors. I was in the prayer warriors department. And I, and I went in, and I, and I had this, the, the, you know, those were days when our church was a church. Our local church, right, was a place where they brought all kinds of people who were sick, all kinds of people who were maimed, all, all kinds of people. And then they brought one mad girl. Her name was Felicia. I don't forget her name. Her name was Felicia. And they brought Felicia to church. Mad girl. So my pastor's wife Jerry. called me that day. I mean, we're all in the prayer department. And he said to me, Jerry, this, this is your case. case. Pray, pray for Felicia. Felicia. I said, what? He said, yes. He said, pray, pray for, for Felicia. Felicia. I said, no problem. And all that. And then I summoned up courage. I was a lot younger than this. And then I went, summoned up courage to go and pray for Felicia. As I was approaching Felicia, she started laughing. <laughs> she started smiling. And then on top of it, Felicia said, and I'm sorry for those who didn't hear it, but let me say it the way she said it in Ibo. He said, last one there, last one there, last one there. I was looking at Felicia. And then she told again, say, Sorry, what it means in English is that if you come close, I will beat the hell out of you. And all that. And then I was looking, I said, shut up in Jesus' name. She stood up and began to chase me. And that's how I ran out of the church. But you know, the very striking part of it is that my pastor's wife, she will show up and Felicia will want to look for somewhere to go and hide. She will show up and Felicia will go, I was so depressed. And I looked at her and I said to her, Ma, how come whenever you come, Felicia will go and look for somewhere to hide. When I come, Felicia will be asking me to come. What, why? Hey guys, thank you for watching this period. I would like to pause a bit. Why haven't you subscribed to our YouTube channel? What are you waiting for? Please, guys, you want me to kneel down for you guys? I'm gonna kneel down, beg on, I'm gonna follow me, subscribe to my page, give this small girl support so that we can be giving it to you. Jeez, 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 jeez. Hey, my why? My why? And she looked at me and he said, Jerry, there are ashes on your altar. Go and clear the ashes on your altar. And you, oh God bless that woman wherever she is. She said, there are ashes on your altar. Go and clear the ashes on your altar. I said, oh God, these were days when I showed up in church and everybody, I didn't know where it came from because she had a high opinion of me before that time. You know, the truth of the matter is that may situations not reveal your emptiness. That is the prayer. May situations not come to reveal how much of capacity you don't have. And people of God, this was the exactly the same thing that happened to the disciples of Jesus and Jesus himself. The Bible said prior to the healing of a particular... Um
reason why when a man knows what he carries, he carries a prayer altar that sustains him. When a man understands where, how far and where God is taking him, there can never be any reign of the spirit without prayers. The Bible says that the apostles were gathered together in one room and they were praying. And they were praying. As they were praying, the Bible says there was a sound like that of a mighty rushing wind. And after that, clothing tongues of fire fell upon their head. And child of God, back to my story. I, 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 I returned back and I told my mom, she's late now. And I told my mom, look at what pastor's wife said. And she said, yes, that nobody sleeps in the night. I'm supposed to confront demons in the morning. And my mother says, ask me my prayer. And then we started. I said, except you help me. Come and help me. Let's be doing it. And my mother woke me. I was a lot younger. You have no idea how young I was. And then we started praying. I started praying. I started praying. It was a struggle initially. It was a struggle initially. And my fellow pastor's wife, when I was leaving church that day, she called me. She said, Remember what Jesus told his disciples. I said, What did he say? He said, Remember, he said to them, You cannot even stay with me, even for one hour praying. He said, The minimum is one hour. He said, Yeah, man. I have not even effectively achieved 15 minutes. And then you are stretching it to one hour. He said, Please, I want you to know that the Spirit is about to give you utterance. Holland is Shaba. Child of God, there's a place of prayer where you are not the one praying, but prayer is praying you. Until the Lord transitions you to that place where you are not the one recalling your mood. Because you don't have no idea what you are carrying on the Sebala. If you will just allow the Lord, you know, the truth is that we cannot be crying and say, Lord, let things change. And the Lord is saying, The people who are crying do not have the capacity to carry what I'm about to pour out. They don't have the capacity to carry what I'm about to pour out. And child of God, I returned. I did that prayer for a long time. Remember, Felicia was scared of my pastor's wife, but Felicia was still not healed. Felicia was running up and down wherever my pastor's wife showed up. Felicia would run around, but Felicia was still not healed. Child of God, I kept praying. I didn't even understand. I kept, of course, because Felicia was always looking out for me in church, always looking out for me. No matter how many persons are in church, Felicia will spot me out. So there's a way the church is. So I started staying in a place where Felicia will not see me. So and I stayed there, and nobody, I mean, that was the only way I could have peace. Do you know because of Felicia, I could not come to church? I could not come to church someday because I don't know whether they did her madness towards me. Because everywhere I am, Felicia will, you know the shocking part of it. Let me let you know the shocking part of it. I come in and Felicia has not seen me. And Felicia, from wherever she is, she will start calling me last one. Last one. So and I'm like, she hasn't seen me. How did she know me? I knew that this one was a demon trying to drill me and trying to embarrass me and trying to intimidate me for no reason. So I stayed away. One day I walked into church, sat down. Felicia began to shout. She hadn't seen me. He said, Uncle, Uncle, Uncle. And she started shouting. Uncle, Uncle. She's calling me, told me it's because of you that she's shouting. Uncle. There is prophecy over Uncle. you. And the devil told me, Don't near her. Uncle. And another one said to me, Go and see. And then I turned, tiptoed, and then got to worship. So the more she cited me, she shouted, Hi. How I rest. How I came inside me. I say, you evil spirit. She shouted more. I say, hey, it has happened. So, and I approached her. I, I came close. I said, listen, your time is over. Your time is over. A part of me was scared. A part of me was saying, continue to do what you're doing. And not the righteous is as bold as a lion. Even though I am not so convinced that it is me that she's shouting about. But I shall know that I've been praying all this while. I said, God, please do it for me. And if you do it for me, and child of God, I spoke. And Felicia fell. Continue my spirit